three days to the holding of regional elections, uh, who qualified or presented as a magic solution to the armed conflict in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. Opinions are divided, divided Cameroonians over the holding of the elections and an opinion leader an elite of the Anglophone regions of Cameroon is calling on the government of Cameroon to halt elections with immediate effect, resolve the Anglophone crisis before proceeding. We shall also be presenting a strike action staged by inhabitants of a village in the Villa Division of the South Region of Cameroon. You want to know the Bepanda Omnispo Stadium, call it the Douala Reunification Stadium, will be one of these structures to host matches for Chan 2021 and AFCON 2022, but the way into the uh, sport infrastructure is pathetic. We'll tell you more on this and other stories in this edition of the news. Thanks for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Fomi Armstrong Sanda from Douala Cameroon's Economic Capital City, Equinox Central News Desk. Primetime news on Equinox Television. Thanks for choosing uh, to listen to information on the best of uh, channel across the Republic of Cameroon. We begin right away with a protest demonstration staged by inhabitants, men and women of uh, Mark. Kamavim, that's a village in the Villa Division of the South Region of Cameroon. In Anga, they blocked the main road leading to the village and also passing over to other parts of the South Region of Cameroon asking for the payments of indemnities several years after. Immaculate Fogwe, Dorso Sumo. The main entrance into Mekamavim in Mengong, Villa Division, South Region of Cameroon, blocked by the angry population they are reclaiming their indemnities after their houses were destroyed by the government so as to give way for the construction of the sang melima mengang highway we blocked the road because we want them to do what they are supposed to do our houses and cocoa farms were destroyed none of us standing here have been given a franc According to the angry villagers, the divisional officer showed them an envelope containing money which was supposed to be shared to everyone, but he later told them that the money given to him was insufficient. The divisional officer was here yesterday. He told us that the money given to him is finished. He did not tell us when next the other set will receive their own share. The situation provoked the holding of a crisis meeting organized by the governor of the South Region, Felix Ngilingili. The meeting was equally attended by traditional rulers and representatives of the victims. At the end of the meeting, he urged the population to be patient. He equally promised them that the government is currently working on their case. A wave of protest demonstrations across Cameroon should be recorded that the case of the South Region of Cameroon is coming less than 24 hours after inhabitants of uh, Bafang in the Open Cam Division of the West Region of Cameroon went protesting. Also, we had information or we had images of uh, a protest demonstration stage by traders of uh, Kola Famba, that's in the central region of uh, Cameroon. They were angry with the mayor of the locality who is said to uh, be in a complicity with some traders, asking them to go back to where traders were initially chased to relocate to the Nkola Famba municipal market. Few weeks to the kickstart of the African Championship, that is uh, Chan, or Nations Championship Chan, to be staged in Cameroon. Access ways into the Douala Reunification Stadium remains very difficult. The road has since been abandoned, even though the newly uh, rehabilitated uh, Bepanda of Nispo or the Douala Reunification Stadium is said to be one of the sites to host matches and uh, competitions within the context of Chan 2021 and Safcon 2022 in Cameroon. Semad Sinjikangi will take us to Bepanda in the Douala 5 subdivision. 
it still remains a veritable problem for the users of the stretch of road heading to the newly renovated reunification stadium and its annex located at Bepanda neighborhood in Douala. The road, which is supposed to be set as Cameroon prepares for upcoming competitions, is still untouched and few weeks to the African Nations Championship shan hopes of it being constructed is low. Along the same stretch of road, one could spot drainage patterns that were already being constructed, but unfortunately, it's been abandoned. Its abandonment has made people to transform it to a dumping ground while others use it as a place to relieve themselves. Beside the fence of the newly renovated Bepanda Omnisport Stadium, lorries could also be spotted being parked. Some years back, before the construction of the stadium, these lorry drivers were shown a new parking zone which they considered too far and since then, they have continued parking at their initial site. Going by the recent remarks made by the Prime Minister, Chief Dr. Joseph Jongute, during the 27th session of the committee tasked with the preparation of the 2021 African Nations Championship, Shan, and the 2022 AFCON, urging finishing touches on the different sites to host the competition to be executed, stakeholders are asking Douala committee members to start work immediately at the stretch of the road leading to the main stadium because time is no longer on our side. With over 250 legalized political parties in the country, just less than 10 will be participating in the upcoming regional elections expected in less than three days across Cameroon. And one of such parties that has decided not to boycott the highly boycotted regional elections in Cameroon is the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, the PCRN political party, or the CPNR political party of Honorable Cabral B. Cabral B has intensified campaigns ahead of the election in the west region of Cameroon and also in the Nyong and Kelly division of the central region of Cameroon. Charles Ikume tells us more in the following report. Flexible weekend for the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation during this electoral campaign in the West Region of Cameroon. The regional coordinator of the party led the members of the party's delegation with its national president, Cabral Libby, who was present spearheading the activities of the campaign in the Noon, Menwa and Kunki divisions of the West Region. The PCRN delegation evaluated its options and presented its vision for its constituents, during which Cabral Libby says we need Need a different Cameroon. Notre pays traverse the moment très difficile. Our country is going through very difficult moments. We wish to have a better Cameroon for our children. The PCRN, which has 17 members in these elections, will have to face the CPDM and the UDC in the noon division of the West Region of Cameroon. Meantime, in Ezeka, in the Nyong and Kelly division of the central region of Cameroon, the traditional authorities were campaigning at proximity with the aim of convincing their constituents ahead of the December 6th regional elections. In the locality of Sodibanga, in Mesondo, the listed candidates have presented their developmental projects, which consists of paving a way towards decentralization in Cameroon. The young traditional authorities of Nyong and Kelly division are conscious of the problems the local population faces on a daily basis and believe they are the voices of change. In total, there are seven lists of traditional chiefs who will be competing in this division as well as four political parties which are the CPDM, PCRN, UPC and the PURS competing in the Goa and Kelly division ahead of the December 6th regional elections. And qualified as uh, the most dividing elections that Cameroon has had in over uh, years, 
the party's candidates for Vuri, or one of the candidates running under the banner of uh, the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation for Vuri, Madame Ba Akwen Nadine, says the PCRN political party is conscious of uh, the challenges of the people of the north and south regions of Cameroon and also is not indifferent to the concerns raised by some parties uh, which have decided to boycott the election. She, however, believes that participating will pave a way to resolve the crisis. Listen to her in the following extract. And of course, considering the dividing nature of the upcoming regional elections in Cameroon, we hooked up with a party candidate of the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation running in uh, Douala, or rather in the Vuri division of the Little region of uh, Cameroon. We sorted to know from her why the party is uh, persistent and as parties insisting on participating in the election at a time when most opposition political parties in the country have decided to boycott. Listen to her. The CPNR is a political movement that is positive and we believe that with our participation in this regional elections, we will be able to, you know, take part in the peace that is supposed to be taken place in the northwest and the southwest region. Well, uh, Mr. Fomi, um, I am not going to, you know, contest on their reasons for not going for these regional elections. But the CPNR has decided to play politics, play politics of legitimacy. As a political party, the only way you can change a country is by going in for elections. There is no other way you can change a country. So we have decided to go into these elections because we want to give a chance for the peace in Cameroon because we are a party that puts humans at the center of it all. So the other parties like the SDF, they gave their reasons that the Northwest and Southwest crisis was supposed to be end before any elections and they put in doubt the Electoral College, which for me it's not normal because this same Electoral College were the ones that voted for the MPs and the municipal councillor that will be able to vote the regional delegates. So CPNRO decided to go for these elections because we want to give a chance and we want to always give a chance for peace in Cameroon. You know, this regional elections is aimed at fast forwarding decentralization. You know, many people put in doubt that it cannot, you know, solve it cannot solve the problem of the Northwest and Southwest, but we believe that it can partially, you know, appease the minds of those because the special statutes will be implemented and with our presence in the electoral college of, um, you know, the regional councillors, we will be able to make sure and fight that all what was promised during the Grand National Dialogue should be implemented. And she also spoke on the possibilities of the party sailing through in the literal region of Cameroon considering that the party has very few municipal councillors in the littoral region of Cameroon and the Vuri division of the littoral region. She is also conscious of the fact that municipal councillors form the electoral college, the people to vote, and she says their project is captivating, convincing, and good enough to get municipal councillors of the ruling CPTM political party vote candidates of the opposition CPR and political party. Madam Ba Akwen, candidates of the CPR and political party for the Vore Division, is also convinced oh, that the party's projects for the Vore Division will get councillors from other opposition political parties and those of the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement political party, the CPDM political party votes candidates of her party. She says they have a project convincing the project good for the Vuri division. She says the Vuri division, which is uh, the division producing the highest amount of money used in Cameroon so far, and of course, their party is conscious of that. They have decided to tackle the challenges of the people of the Vuri from that angle. Listen to her. It's an exaggeration. CPNR puts humans at the center of all what they do. So you saying that we do not have the Norways and Southwest at heart, it's a gross exaggeration. Because you will believe with me that when 
the crisis that happened in Kumban, children were killed. We came out in our numbers, we decried, we sent out, we even went for a press conference and we spoke and we put in doubt the ability for the government to solve the problem. Our president, national president, Konobu Kabralibi, he said that the government should take charge over this problem because we do not know the separatist fighters. Well, um, mathematically, um, we cannot do it, but we are a positive party, and what we, we have that will be able to seduce is our project for the Vuri. Because you see, Vuri, it's a cosmopolitan town built with you know diverse people, the Anglophones, the Francophones, and all other ethnic groups. So we have studied Vuri in general, and we found out that Vuri is the mother bird that produces mostly all the incomes of Cameroon. But people from the Vuri still suffer. So we decided to come out with a project that will be able to seduce even electorates from the other political parties like the LTPC and the STF. So we believe that they will come and dine with us. They will come and share with us this view which is our project which will be able to satisfy everybody so that's our arm that is what we have however the o opinions of Cameroonians are still very divided over the holding of these elections with less than three days to go and uh, civil society actor chief dr joseph mofo says the election should be called off by the government of Cameroon. To him, the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon should be given special attention, be resolved first before such elections are organized. Listen to him. So these two regions, they are not happy. Others, they have really involved themselves to politics. They are happy. Others, they are not happy. That is the reason why I can say they should look at this problem and solve the problem before going in for election. There are other phones that they are ready and there are others that they are not ready. The problems is that the, the government and the people governing the country with His uh, Excellency Paul Bia and the governors of these regions and other close collaborators him should see to this phone and sit together with them dialogue the situation, negotiate the situation so that peace should reign in these two regions before elections. Separatists are really warning hearts against it and even political party. And this will make so that the situations will uh, be so difficult to really bring peace. If the government can really merge us, they love these two regions have been enjoined with the other eight regions. If he really look at the loved, he should stop the process of these elections and negotiate so that this crisis should really stop and they carry the elections process. That would be better. Expressing anger over the persisting crisis in the north and south regions of Cameroon, the civil society actor and Anglophone elite explained what he proposed to end the over three years arms conflict. A civil society leader, I long proposed the head of state should call to all phones of these two regions and negotiate with them, dialogue with them, so that they can call their sons abroad, so that they should arrange this problem amicably, sit on a round table to make an open dialogue, not a conditional dialogue that they did before. They should give rooms to phones, to people in these two regions to really make up and talk their mind on what they are facing and give proposals how to end the crisis. They should not take people that they are not concerned in these two regions to sit down and negotiate or to say whatsoever that concerns the trouble the people of these two regions are facing. It's deplorable. The head of state said they should take 200 people from these two regions and join up a team so that the national dialogue should be at least a clear and transparent national dialogue. But people maneuver things and take people that they do not know the glass road, what the people of these two regions are facing. I am from the regions. There are people in this country that they don't want the crisis to finish because they are making themselves richer and richer every day. And Senator Mbela Mukichas on his part has called on councillors of Tiku Council not to betray or disappoint the CPTM campaign chairperson for the Faku Division, Minister Nalova Lyonga. 
Senator Mbela Mukicha has asked councillors of Tiku to give a 100% victory to the ruling CPT and political party and also charge traditional rulers of FACO to make history by going for the CPTM party. Derek Jato has been on the campaign trail of the CPTM within FACO and compiled the following report. The CBDM FACO envoy to FACO for Senator Mbela Moki Charles makes his entrance into the Tiko Council to campaign to the councillors as they count down to December signals. This Tiko Council is a CBDM run council, and this is the pace of the campaigns here meetings with councillors, talking to them to see the need to vote 100% to their candidates into the regional house. The Honorable Minister. Nalova Lyonga sent a special message to all of them, a message of commitment and dedication to the CPDM party and its leadership. And the response by the bearer of Minister Nalova Lyonga's message was satisfying. We translated that message to a very positive and laudable response from the councillors, which is an indication that all 41 councillors of Tiko Council have given us their word, which word is that they are all going to vote. Elsewhere, now in Boya, the aspiring traditional rulers into the House of Chiefs are moving from one palace to another and carrying with them their manifestos. You know, people should expect that we shall sit down, have a, a listening ear to them, and find out how best we can overcome this impasse. Because for everything has been done, the president is doing a lot. He's done a, a reconstruction. They are going to do this bilingualism. There's all sorts of things. So we have to look into that and find out the root of why there's still this problem. To these traditional rulers, the preparation is total. I want to say that we are ready. Uh, the chiefs are ready. On Sunday, all the chiefs are ready to go to Limbe and to cast their vote. Today, the awareness is everywhere that after December 6, 2020, the fate of the Southwest region will be squarely on the shoulders of those vying for positions in the regional house or the house of chiefs. And everyone is watching. And before talking points, Innocent as it takes us into the fight against the consumption of whiskey. His report. Members of an association protecting consumers and fighting for their rights, understanding the danger of consuming whiskey in sachet, sensitize Cameroonians to drop the habit in trash cans. We just some of the messages they brandished in Bonaberry include whiskey in sachet is a hard drug and poison. The whiskey in sachet is a poison. A poison for notre jeunesse. Whiskey in sachet kills. The whiskey in sachet kills. Whiskey in sachet is banned since 2014. They therefore denounce continuous sale and consumption of such whiskey. Il y a des Camerounais qui meurent. Tous les jours, il y a des personnes qui tombent gravement malades à cause de la consommation de ce breuvage dangereux. These messages were carried to the population as they marched through various streets in the Douala Four municipality. Whiskey in sachet kills our morality, our behavior even of the children at home and uh, that of our parents because sometimes a father will prefer to consume alcohol and forget about its responsibility. Whiskey and sachet kills. It kills as you can see on placards there. As you drink it, it affects your lungs, the liver. It destroys your, your system. Since its ban, production, sale and consumption of the whiskey and sachet still gain grounds with no one enforcing the decision. <laughs> The immatriculation ceremony of newly admitted students into the Hafa Institute, Duala, has uh, ended.
the Alpha Higher Institute, expanding and gaining grounds across the economic capital city and also in Cameroon, is uh, priding with its uh, new campus at Peka Katos in the economic capital city. Chasi Kume tells us more in the following advertorial. Welcome to Alpha Higher Institute of Biomedical and Technological Sciences and Alpha Professional Training Institute Douala with its dispatch campuses A, B, C and D situated at Deido Nouveau Isses avant Entrée Serrade, Bonaberry Mabanda just after Cimetière Cotobas, Bonaberry Catretage on the third floor and Peka Katos opposite SGBC Bank respectively. Alpha Higher Institute has this year as far as immatriculation is concerned is that we're moving from the main campus which is at Daido right now we found our ourselves in Bonaberry at Mabanda campus while we launch a cartridge building not forgetting the newborn baby which is the Pekka Katos building. Uh, we have at Alpha today, we are not only talking about uh, HND, we are not only talking about bachelors, but we have our new graduates of uh, uh, MBA who will be graduating this 2020 2021. And I think it's just a way for us to consolidate the 13th position that we occupy under the Ministry of Higher Education as far as national exams are concerned. And we think we should continuously improve on the society. And as our motto says, quality education for better services and development and I think that's what Alpha as a whole stands to uh, achieve. This institute harbors a set of outstanding lecturers with broad knowledge and specialized in various domains. Students are trained in banking and finance, insurance, accountancy, marketing, medical and biomedical courses amongst other specialties. Au campus A, on a des formations de sciences de la santé. In campus A, we train students in health sciences, specifically nurses and laboratory technicians. We also train students in business studies like management, marketing, insurance and accountancy. On réalise de ce côté. Au campus B, il y a également un pan de formation de, dans le domaine. In campus B, we train students in health sciences and business studies. Technique de laboratoire et également aussi, on va retrouver les filières de management. Au campus C, uh, in campus C at Cat Etage, it is the same options offered as campus B. Au campus D qui est le nouveau, là nous sommes in campus D, which is the new campus, we have more of health science students. Co plus présent là-bas. Of international standards, Alpha Higher Institute is the best place for studies with spacious lecture halls and every campuses which expands the student's body on a yearly basis. This is my first time witnessing our matriculation ceremony. It is a ceremony to welcome us the first year students. I am so overwhelmed with the nature of the ceremony and also how the older students welcomed us. Beautiful indeed, like these freshmen on campus during the matriculation ceremony who chose Alpha Higher Institute to accompany them due to its outstanding reputation. Again, I would say the occasion is marvelous, it's fantastic, and I will urge everybody, everyone, to like follow me to Alpha Higher Institute because Alpha Higher Institute is a bilingual training center that trains both medical personnel and business management people. Alpha Higher Institute remains an embodiment of professional competence and educational excellence. <laughs> Coming up is Talking Point. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on Talking Points. We are receiving a legal mind. We are receiving Barista Nkamwa Lehman. He is a member of the Cameroon Bar Association and head of the Kamwa Lehman Law Firm in Douala. Barista, thanks for accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure. Mossy, it wasn't easy having you. We struggle hard, but you know, we work according to the taste of uh, our viewers and our listeners. And of course, on critical issues, we just know who to find because at least they to have uh, reactions after our news. They know who to explain what to them and explain in the way they will understand. It's and a pleasure. Are, despite their tight schedule, you accepted to be with us. It's a pleasure, and uh, I won't disappoint them in my observations and pronouncements. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are beginning with him to talk about the torso for the Kumba City Council. It's been going on and on and on and on. Uh, the most recent uh, developments in the torso for the Kumba City Council is the decision of uh, the administrative court of Buya. Does it solve the problem? 
Well, I just want you to know that um, it is a very serious issue. It's actually a, an academic uh, uh, exercise, and uh, I had the privilege and honor to work with, to have discussions with uh, my colleagues, uh, like Justice Meteke Divine, in our forum, Liga, Dynamic Legal Minds, and we brainstorm on, on issues. And so the pronouncements I'll be making here is uh, ideas put together which I, I greet everybody in that forum. That said, uh, the, the decision of the administrative court is that uh, it declined its competence over the issue, but however, uh, recognize the fact that uh, the current mayor, the current city mayor uh, ha is an ex-convict, which uh, infringes or which is against the provisions of section 47 of the electoral code, which is to the effect that uh, anybody with a criminal record is disqualified to be uh, a candidate. And uh, you see, as I said, that it's uh, an academic uh, exercise because at one, one point, we have divided school. We have a school that believes that, uh, the, that since the decision, the judgment was uh, appealed and is still pending in the court of appeal, and that to them, it suspends the execution of, of the judgment. And so, it goes without saying that it, uh, it is not enforceable and should not create a problem. Whereas another school of thought, which I, I, I belong to, I belong oh, to buy. Oh, yes, I buy, uh, insists that uh, since there's a condemnation of uh, a sentence of uh, nine, 900 to pay 100,000 francs or seven, nine months imprisonment terms, that he has been convicted. And that is the only judgment that we have. No judgment has come to to annul that judgment. And uh, you see the period of nine months is above the six months which is stated in the in the 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 electoral code because if you it provides that for any sentence above six months the the candidate is not eligible. So with that I think uh, honestly I opine that uh, there might be a very serious problem in front. But the, the, the candidate we are talking about, the current city mayor, who was already installed as the Pawnee city mayor for uh, Kumba, went directly to the Supreme Court. Yes, but he didn't go to the Supreme Court on this matter. Okay. The Supreme Court had not to, I think they had a matter of uh, a fraud or something like that with elections. Right. But these elections were not, was not properly conducted. That was the first thing that took them to the Supreme Court. This matter has not been heard. All right, so now you, you ended your, your first development by saying that you think it's going to be uh, complicated. How complicated would it be? What makes it very complex and difficult? It might lead to the, the replacement again of of the mayor, of the city mayor, because if we if we apply the law, if the law is applied stricto sensu, it means that he's, he was not eligible. But as I said, there's a school of thought that believed that that judgment is, is not uh, a final judgment and so could not be executed. And as I repeat, I find favor in the opinion of the second group, which feels that there is a, he was convicted mm. and uh, so he should, uh, the law, the law should be applied. Uh, the, the, the barrister, we, 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 I know it's, it's some sort of mixing politics here and uh, the law, but are these, not things, are, are these not things that would have been raised when he went in to be a municipal councillor in Akuma before finding his way to stand as candidate, consequently being elected and now... You see, uh, Mr. Fomi, I, I don't talk politics, I talk the law. Yeah. I've given the provisions of the law and what it states. Now, coming to maybe you think that it has been stopped by the fact that it was not stopped, there is a there is a the principle of estoppel, which uh, some people equally hold that since nothing was done to to prevent him from ascending to the ascending to the throne to the the their office, and that nothing nothing should be done. I still don't find credit in that. Now, if it's true, and of course, well, the law has already established it that he is he is a an ex convict, and of course should step. No, the law has not asked him. That court yeah, has not asked, asked him, him to, to step down. No, they simply took notice of the fact that yes, that he's an he's an ex convict, and, and so the decline is responsibility. So that judgment, the judgment, they cannot be executed. Then legally, what should uh, the, the right court? The, they, they should seize the right court, which is the which civil is court, the civil, civil ordinary court. Who, which team? The the, the Victor Kalengo led team or the Greek Mewano led team? But is uh, is uh, Ngele? Is who uh, Victor Kele, 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 Vito Kele, uh, Kelengo, who sees the court? 
should seize the court. Yes, yeah, should seize the appropriate court. And ensure the execution of uh, the... No, law. for the court to hear the matter in its merit. The court has to hear the matter in the marriage. The matter has not been heard in this marriage. You, 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 you bear with me that's really difficult. And of course, the population, the people of Kumba, Cameroonians, need to really understand this. Yes. What I'm saying. What we brought you here. Yes. What I'm saying is that um, Mr. Kelly brought an action that uh, the court should render a judgment disqualifying the candidature or removing the present. Uh, is Mewano, right? To, Mewano, yes. to remove him from from uh, from the head of uh, the, the the council because he has a criminal record which infringes, which is against the provisions of the aforecited uh, section 47 of the electoral code. So that is the issue. And as I said, there are two schools. The the the, uh, the, the one school believe that he has uh, indeed the, the the judgment has been appealed. And so he has a suspensive, uh, it suspends execution, whereas others think that he has been convicted, and so they should go by the law. So what we are saying in essence is that the court that was seized declined its competence and, and said they should seize the right court. And you, 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 you go for the second school of thought. If I look at the law and the facts, by by, by implication, he shouldn't be exercising his duty as the. Mayor nobody can tell him that until the court, until the court passes a judgment. Nobody can tell him that he is still the city mayor. And until Victor and until a court goes to that level of uh, yes, city. until a court gives a ruling, which that ruling could still be appealed, and until such a final ruling is is obtained, that they can they, they, they can destitute him. And now that this has already been established by the court in Kumba, now the option is the Victor Kalengo team should take the next step, as you explained, uh, getting to the next court, uh, which I don't master best. Is it not also the right of the people of Kumbana to say, okay, you uh, even if uh, Victor Kalengo decides to say, okay, I've negotiated, I've discussed with him, for him, to, uh, he will still be there. Is it not the right of the people <laughs> of Kumba to, to take actions? Well, can't they do that? To take actions on doing what? Like uh, taking the step, the legal step that the Victor Kalengo uh, should take in case he decides not to. Well, the one thing you should know is that if uh, Mirano is not there, it's not automatic that it's uh, Victor Ngo. Uh, no, there. it's not automatic. The people will go back to fresh elections and they might see vote somebody else. There's no guarantee that he's the one who's going to. He has, he's the one who brought an action because he feels that his rights were infringed. But it does not mean that the people who see vote, who must vote him. No, that's not the purpose. That's not the essence of, uh, of the of the court matter it's not the essence all right Barista, we, we we proceed we're still in kumba we learned that the proprietor of uh, mother francisca international bilingual academy where unfortunately some students were assassinated and the wife we have been transferred to a prison barista you've uh, surely learned about it and the procedure that has been on course is there some infringement is there legally some things that are not being correctly done I say so because before now, since the incident occurred, we, we learned that they have been in detention and just recently been transferred from Kumba to Boya also. Okay, you know, you cannot make uh, pronouncements over issues that you don't have sufficient facts. So I think investigations were going on and in my opinion, may, maybe they got enough uh, Evidence, evidence or may they got enough yes as i said evidence to support the fact that uh, maybe they were in one way or in the one other, other implicated in in what happened but still if i think broadly i will see thing that i don't understand how the victim because they look more like the victim to me they look more like the victim because the act was perpetrated in their school and so how do they become terrorists how do they but as i said I cannot make any pronouncements without knowing the facts and without uh, reading the, the statements made by party and the proof standard. And considering that it's coming also at a time when an, an individual was intercepted in Kumba, described by the SGO for the Kumba, the, the, the Mehmet Division as a, a Nambazonian general, I'll call it a separatist commander who took part in this Kumba school massacre. Somebody has been identified already. We also heard from administrators that another person was killed. Who, you, you know, I I, I really uh, exercise some reservation 
as to what I saw that the the deal is a senior officer was asking some questions and affirming the man and he's, uh, he's alleged and saying as if he was fact that uh, he's the one is part of the people who committed the offense please we should allow justice to do its work if they think he's still he's still a suspect at this level he's still a suspect and so it is not it's not correct to me that the senior division officer should, should give the public the impression that they've apprehended one of those people the court should do its work he has done his work to 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 arrest People create problems for others in, in Kumba, but he shouldn't go this far to. to now, now we, we, that's not been, it's not actually the first of such uh, incidents in Cameroon or uh, such events. We have on several occasions when people are intercepted, they are yet to be taken to court, but they are presented to the public. Biden Dwala in Yaoundé, in other towns and cities in Cameroon, some are turned by the police, some by the gendarmerie officers legally or considering the human rights laws in place are there some infringement is there something wrong with that? yes yes if you consider that these these people are still suspects and uh, there's a presumption of innocence it is it is not proper to do that i know that they're doing that to maybe dissuade others from committing offenses or to assure the population that mm. something is being done but honestly speaking it uh, infringes on the right because not everybody who's been branded on the television as a criminal will, will, will be condemned at the long run because there are some people who will be declared not guilty. Lawyers will do their work, and uh, if they, they, they are not criminals, they will be declared not guilty. What happens now to the image? What happens now to, to what, what has been sent to the public? It is not correct. And, and what should be done in such cases where they also have a responsibility to dissuade others and also to get the people abreast with their activities? I think uh, they should instead. Uh, bring out those people who've been condemned for those offenses than bringing people who are suspected. When the court decision comes out, okay, they can do a documentary to show that this person was apprehended. As you see in, if, uh, in uh, most of the foreign channels, they, 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 they go into digging crimes, I was committed, and the final verdict. I think that can be sweet. Right. So wait until when the judgment is being pronounced and you, 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 you make it public. Thanks uh, very much, Barrister. It was an interesting chat with you, Barrister Nkamwa Limen. You are a member of the Cameroon Bar Association and head of the uh, Kamwa Limen Law Firm in Douala. Yes, and it's always a pleasure. Each time I have time. We can't thank you enough, Baris. It wasn't easy having you, I must say. The pleasure is mine. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for your kind attention. That was all we had time for as far as uh, the prime time news is concerned on Equinox Television. Have a nice day in the company of programs on your number one television channel across Cameroon. Mm -hmm.